Gabriel, thank you again for joining us. Um, I wanted to ask you a question right out of the gate. I know um, uh, having talked to you, uh, you know, at the store, just in passing and mm -hmm. stuff, uh, you, you've told me that comics weren't necessarily your first sort of entryway into the, the art world or your art world specifically. Um, where, tell us a little bit about your history with uh, with your work, with art. Uh, well, I mean, it's not exactly true that comics weren't the first thing. I mean, comics were the very first thing I did. I, I, when I was 18, I, um, I got my first job drawing uh, uh, drawing a book for Marvel. Uh, oh, wow. uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I talked to you about this. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> you know, but... Um, uh, you know, but I, I did a couple books for them in the 90s. Uh, I, you know, I, I worked, you know, maybe until 96 mm -hmm. drawing comics for, you know, Malibu and some for DC as well. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then, you know, the, the industry kind of imploded at that mm -hmm. point, you know, uh, after the speculator boom and all that stuff. And so, uh, and I moved out here and ended up getting into doing storyboards uh, for movies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first movie I I storyboard was uh, the first Austin Powers movie, okay. which was uh, <laughs> which is a really really small non-union movie mm -hmm. that uh, that went union as they started shooting, and I, I got into the union that way and just continued working on movies for the next like dozen years or so. Nice. Yeah. So you kind of found something that you, you felt was a bigger foothold for you, just to. Well, it made money. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I was, I was able to live comfortably, which yeah. uh, which which wasn't the case in comics uh, at the time. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it was just, I don't think there was even a choice at that point. It yeah. was so, uh, uh, you know, the industry, you know, evaporated, the comics industry evaporated. You know, movies were just there, and uh, and I, I was always, you know, I've always been, uh, you know, a huge movie fan, and uh, and, uh, and it was just, it was just a natural thing that, that I would then start working in movies. So speaking of movies, I know uh, I talked to Jeff a few times, and he was like, Look, if you're going to ask him questions, ask him right off the bat what some of his favorite older movies were because you are a huge movie fan. <laughs> I am. I am. And, that, and that's actually probably too difficult of a thing to, to narrow down, you know. I mean, um, I'm actually a bigger fan. I mean, I feel like, you know, older movies and, and uh, you know, and the movies I'm a fan of are something separate entirely from the movies I've worked on or the right, industry right, right now. Right, you know? right. So, um, uh, but uh, I, I certainly, you know, yeah, it's, it may be a little broad of a question for me to answer. Do, do you uh, do you take some of your style then from, uh, d depending on obviously the comic, uh, do you sort of maybe fit the comic with the, the a sort of stylized? Yeah, well, things are uh, certainly, um, you know, the style of of, uh, of older movies is, is an inspiration. I mean, and also, you know, Hitchcock's my favorite director. Hitchcock is a huge influence just storytelling wise more than stylistically. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I think actually a lot of the stuff that um, uh, a lot of the stuff that I get from uh, any influence I'm getting from movies has more to do with the storytelling than it does the uh, the, the sort of uh, surface stylistics of, of uh, how I'm drawing the book. Uh, your artwork has a unique style that looks age. Is that something from influence? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I take a lot of uh, of a lot of my influences are you know. Um, older comic strip artists, things you know, uh, th things that are a little off the beaten path for you know for contemporary comic influences. But uh, but at the same time, I'm you know whatever influences I'm bringing from that, I'm trying to uh, to filter through a sort of modern sensibility, you know, more modern storytelling sensibility, you know, and um, uh, but I think that the kind of the synthesis of that. Is uh, what makes the stuff I'm doing now seem a little bit unique. Did you? Who were some of your influences uh, growing up? I mean, well, were you a comic fan when you were? Growing I was up? absolutely a comic fan growing up. Um, I uh, and you know my influences growing up probably were the same as like every other artist. You know, it was right. John Byrne and you know George Perez mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and Neil Adams. You know, and uh, and a lot of other people. I mean, Neil Adams. Not you know, I I was going back and finding Neil Adams stuff. I was. It was. It was a lot. A lot of '80s stuff that I was I was into because it was the '80s, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, but my you know as as I went along as I was doing storyboards and I, I you know uh, I stumble upon people like Noel Sickles uh, who did uh, uh, a strip called Scorchy Smith. He had been uh, he'd been a sort of contemporary uh, and um, sometimes collaborator, uh, you know, uh, with Milton Kniff 
you know, who uh, Terry and the Pirates and Steve Canyon and all that, and uh, and the uh, and a lot of other people like that who um, and, and also Will Eisner uh, and a lot of a lot of people like that that I've stumbled upon over the years. I've always felt like there uh, uh, there there were things that I could uh, you know little, you know things that I could not you know take from them, but you know but influences that I I, I could pull in and sort of you know put together in a in a different way. To draw comics than I had in the '90s. Well, we we also know that you you have a tendency to work with uh, Mr. Jeff Parker. Yes. And um, how did that team up come? Because that to me this is one of the uh, this is akin to what I call the sort of Brubaker uh, the the Brubaker Epting team up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to me it's a classic team up, right. and it's one that I continue to see in other things, and I hope we see more of because I'm a you huge know, fan. Of the, I'm sure you definitely uh, <laughs> see more of it. Yeah, I mean, the, um, I no, I love working with Jeff. Yeah. Um, the it was how it came about. It's just sort of a coincidence. I mean, he or maybe he and Mark Panisha, uh, our editor, mm -hmm. uh, saw uh, saw some of the the comic stuff I'd done. Um, you know, I did the Heathen Town graphic novel, and I also did a, uh, I did a little uh, black coat uh, uh, story for mm -hmm. Ape Entertainment. Uh, okay. They, you know, I was still working on a movie, and they, they said, hey, you know, it's, it was a sort of Revolutionary War era spy-ish sort of book, and um, or s s sort of Zorro-esque book, you know, okay. and uh, and it just, you know, it was in black and white. And it sounded like it would be fun to draw, so I did that. Uh, basically, while I was working on uh, uh, Land of the Lost, <laughs> uh, but it, you know, and and as a, you know, when you hear the the movies that I have ended up having to work on, you'll know why I'm drawing comics right now. But um, but the uh, you know, and uh, and they they saw some of that stuff. At, you know, asked me if I Sketching. wanted. To. It looks like you use a paintbrush a couple of times. Oh yeah, I, that's. I mean, I, I use uh, you know ink and brush like. You know, in, in a very old-fashioned sort of way. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I draw. I, I sort of um, obviously I scan everything and I uh, and I make tweaks and uh, run into and, Photoshop. Yeah, sure, and uh, you know, and I'll adjust things or I'll I'll kind of you know composite different drawings together occasionally. But for the most part, I I just do it uh, in, in a very straightforward, traditional way. I I, I think that. Um, you know, uh, it's it's hard to replace uh, the the sort of improvisational quality of drawing with a brush and being able to just be sloppy or use a dry brush or, or you know all sorts of stuff that that's uh, it's it's more laborious to do uh, labor intensive rather to do that in Photoshop than it is uh, and it's just for real on the page. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know we're seeing a couple more artists doing the brush style again, like. Yourself, Francis Manipul's doing it mm -hmm. on Flash, and it just brings, you know, a nice feel. It makes it feel it's like organic. Art. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, yeah, I mean, there and, and there's a certain sort of, uh, you know, uh, resurgence of a, of a different sort of style. Uh, you know, to a good degree, uh, Chris Somney's doing it uh, on, uh, you know, uh, for the Mighty Avenger. I think it's called. And um, you know, and there's some, some people like Mitch Breitweiser uh, doing. A, a, he, he just had a, a Captain America Patriot miniseries. The mm -hmm. first issue came out, and uh, his his wife actually colors my uh, my stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, you know, and I, that's a huge component of it too, the coloring. Uh, and you know, if this this day and age, if if you don't have great colorists that you work well with, you're completely sunk. Mm -hmm. In uh, reading Hulk uh, number twenty-five, this issue, this is your first on the mm -hmm. Hulk. Um, I noticed uh, in one of the panels, and I, and I mentioned again, this is something I mentioned to Jeff that I noticed that there was a little bit of Atlas in there. Yeah, <laughs> I, asked him, I saw that too. Yeah, I asked him if that was your idea, or was that his idea? No, it, that, that, was, that was in the script. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it was it was just a deliberate nod to you know yeah. to, to the characters that we love from our. Uh, you know, dearly departed. Uh, but <laughs> well, is five yeah. going to be the last one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's such a shame, man. Comes out. Yeah, that's I know. Such I, a shame. This week, actually. Yeah, we were that's recording. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah, good. Well, yeah, that's such a shame. I mean, do you think Marvel will bring it back at any point, or do you think no? no? Really? Characters <laughs> <laughs> are so good. Well, I mean, you know, they they gave it a lot of chances, and we did our best with it, and you know, the you know the sales just didn't justify it. So yeah. I mean, I hopefully I I. 
I say flatly say no for comic effect, but I, right. but it's uh, <laughs> but hopefully there there would be you know there would be some time that you sure. know you could do we could go back and do a one shot or something like that, which I would love to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm oh, I'm I'm a huge fan. Guggenheim of Museum when I was seventeen what? to eighteen. <laughs> Which is, it was, uh... It, That's uh, very cool. Theoretically, that shouldn't be legal. But, no! <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, the woman who, uh, who did the hiring was extremely nearsighted. So I, uh, so I, I, um, I, I don't believe she, she, uh, she noticed my age when, uh, when they were hiring me. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I did that for several months until, and, and the entire time I was, uh, I was trying to break into comics and going to the the local New York cons, and yeah. uh, you know, and uh, um, I, I finally did, you know, get in, uh, um, you know, going and showing my work to a writer, Len Kaminsky, uh, back then, who, who was working on the Iron Man books at the time, and, uh, and that was actually at the Jab the, the awful Javits Center in New York, that which you're going to be at in the cut that part out. It's at the Javits Center in New York, uh, you know, where I'm going back to. Uh, sure. Yeah. Two weeks. So, uh, and you're excited about it, right? <laughs> I'm excited about the show. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, excited about uh, walking to uh, Ninth <laughs> Avenue to get get food. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you know that? Do you know yeah, that? Yeah, the yeah. writer? Because I know you're. He, he's a big Iron Man fan. From, oh, yeah. From yeah. like. He, you've I've read, read stuff. probably every Iron Man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really. And I read yeah. the bad stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. And there's a lot of it. Yeah. Well, I drew War Machine in the 90s. Did you and, really? Yeah. And uh, under a different name. Or maybe I didn't. We're, we're not entirely I'm sure, sure about, about that. that. There yeah. is a different uh, name. Yes. What? Really? Yeah. I didn't I'm, know this. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll do your homework. Hey, I do, but I didn't know that. I don't confirm or deny this stuff, so uh, so I'm not going to go into it too specifically. Well, who, it was his Ziggy Stardust era. It oh. was. It who, was. Who is this right thing? now, I'm the thin white dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. No, I'm actually not. I, I'm not sure what Bowie phase I'm in right now. But. I they think do. it's the Berlin era. That's what I, I, I think it's the, uh, That's the creepier. you know. Yeah. That's the I, heroin, I think it's, you know, totally about the past. Yeah, no, well, no, I think it's the Brian Eno produced, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it's low. Right now I'm in low. <laughs> <laughs> station to station era is going to be yeah. amazing. Yes. That actually, if I'm in low, that happened in the past, but we'll, we'll just we'll yeah. figure it out. That's <laughs> awesome. I didn't, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know Any that. Any clues to Hulk, where it's going, what you can tell us? No. <laughs> They'll be smashing. Otherwise, just, you know, I, I recommend reading the book. You know? <laughs> I, I, that's, that's the surest way to know what's going to happen. It's to I actually kick it up when it comes I think, out. I think you guys are going to reveal Blue Hulk at some point. I, <laughs> well, you it's know. the lanterns last year, yeah. but it's just Hulk. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's, one of them is angry. The other one is also angry, yeah. you know. <laughs> Oh, but only slightly more. There's <laughs> many cool. subtle layers to this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank sure you thing. so much, Gabriel. Yeah. I really appreciate thank it. You, thank you, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking time to watch the show. If you want to see more, you can always subscribe to us, uh, to our podcast at comicimpact.com, or you can check us out on Twitter, on Facebook, or uh, any other sort of social network. We're probably there lurking somewhere. So uh, check us out. Thanks again for watching.